Welcome back. In the previous video we were talking about rotary encoders, kind of the basic use of them. We talked about how to pull for the changes in the pins. We also talked about how to use an interrupt pin. The whole purpose of the series of videos on rotary encoders that I'm doing is to build this device that I have here. This is a representation of the master control panel for the autopilot of a 737. It will be used in an X-plane flight simulator. I write software that connects Arduino boards to X-Plane. I'm building this as a tutorial on how to use my XPL Pro software. This device has a total of six rotary encoders. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six here. It also has about 25 switches that it needs to monitor. It also has about 25 LEDs that it needs to turn on and off. It also has five eight-segment LED displays in which to drive. So the process of scanning all of the switches and all of the rotary encoders is not going to work. I'm trying to make this happen on a Mega. It's already connected back here. In this video, we'll explore different ideas on how to manage the rotary encoders and watch for their changes. I've come up with a few ideas on how we can do this and take the workload off of the processor to make it happen reliably. We'll talk about a few of those options here and I'll let you know which one that we're ultimately going to decide upon. The first solution that we can talk about is to take a look at the platform that we're using. For the purposes of my project, I want to stick with a Mega, but if we wanted to solve this problem easier, we could choose to go with something that has an ARM chip, for instance, this Feather M4. It has a 120 megahertz clock rate. All of the pins, I believe, on an ARM are interrupt capable pins. So for the purposes of looking at six encoders, this would make short work of it, along with the other stuff I need it to do. But for now, we're going to stick with a Mega. The second option is one that I've used in the past in my previous build of a 737 master control panel. It's using a 23017 multiplexer. This is an interesting chip. It communicates via I2C, so it only uses a couple pins on your Arduino. It monitors the pins for changes to occur, and then it triggers an interrupt pin. So you can put eight rotary encoders on this one chip, use one interrupt pin, transfer the data via I2C, and you're good to go. This chip is a little tricky to use, but I did write a library for it that you can use that does all of the difficult work for you. I'll include that library on the Patreon page that contains this video and also the other things that we're doing. This is what the 23017 looks like. It's kind of a comically long package. There are also breakout boards available for the platform. Here's one from Adafruit. And here's another style that's commonly available. This would probably be my first choice for dealing with this, but now there's another option I want to give a try and we'll see if that works. The third solution we're going to try is to use a common interrupt pin through the use of shock key diodes to isolate the, the rotary encoders. But first things first, I have no idea how to pronounce this word, so let's confirm it. Shock key diode. Alright, I think I'm good. To prove the concept of using shock key diodes to make an, a common interrupt pin, I built a small circuit here that connects two of the encoders on my device. One pin from each encoder is connected to an interrupt pin through a shock key diode. The circuit I'm using looks like this. The clock and data pins from each encoder are connected to separate pins on my Arduino Uno. The cathode of two shock key diodes are connected to one pin each on the encoders. The anode side of the shock key diodes are connected together and, and then um, also connected to pin number two of the Arduino, which is interrupt capable. I have experimented a little bit with using the shock key diodes on each pin of the encoder to trigger interrupts, but the coding required to make that work is a little bit more complicated. I decided to keep it simple. This works pretty well. I'm able to discern two steps per detent on these rotary encoders, which is more than really what my use case needs. It's a little bit of a mess, but I have the green wires coming from two of my encoders. I have the shot key diodes on the, on the breadboard, and you can see the Uno is alive. I put a heartbeat on there just to make it a little more interesting. And you can see that Uno is responding when I move 
when I move my encoders, it actually is transmitting serial data just to show what it's doing. We'll see what that looks like. Code here is fairly simple. I've defined uh, the four pins that my encoders are connected to, as well as what pin I'm using as an interrupt detector. For the purposes of the proof of concept, I've got variables here to, to track everything. In the setup, I'm setting my encoder pins to input pull up. Here's where we attach an interrupt to the interrupt pin that we that we decided to use. It's going to call a function which I have down below called check encoders and it will call it any time it senses any kind of change on the interrupt pin. In my loop I'm just looking for things to change and then printing what changes. There's no calls to the encoder or no searching for encoder pins at this time. This line is what causes the heartbeat on the board. Every time an interrupt is sensed, it calls this check encoders function. The first thing I do is I read all of the pins. I, I then look for changes in the pins and, and detect, depending on the, their combinations, I'll increase counter or decrease counter. And I have two counters, one for each encoder. That's the extent of the code here. Here's the serial monitor. So now when I move the encoder, you can see that it's detecting encoder one and it's responding to the changes if I go counterclockwise or clockwise. Let me clear that again so you can see. Here's clockwise and so on. I'll clear it one more time. This is encoder number two. It's hard for me to get to it without blocking it. If I turn it one way or the other, it responds and it knows which one it was. So this proof of concept is looking pretty good. I think I'm going to use this. I'm going to hook up all six encoders on my device. If you're interested in seeing what that looks like, there'll be a, a video coming out soon which is specific to my 737 master control panel build. If you are interested in this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. Subscribing to my channel encourages me to make more videos. Don't forget in the description box is a link to where you can download the sketch from my Patreon page. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.